Hello and welcome to today's cryptocurrency technical analysis where we are going to be going over this massive move to the downside that we are seeing on the Bitcoin chart. The, you know, the lack of support that we are seeing here that could potentially see this crash continue. And I want to go over the next, well, the, the level of resistance we are up against right now, which is, in my opinion, such a crucial level of resistance. If we are to reclaim, we will be looking for much higher. So in this video, I'm going to go over the next level of support, the next really important level of resistance, and really covering some of the reasons behind this move down and also the bounce that occurred here. So I do hope that you really enjoy this video. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope that you are <laughs> feeling prepared for the next battle ahead of us after we, we went to war last night. We really did on this chart. It was fun. And I hope that you are prepared for today. Remember, the next trade is always your best one. The best trade is ahead of you. Let's look towards that and go over the technical analysis. Obviously, yeah, really, really, really big move to the downside. As we can see, still continued selling pressure this morning. The selling pressure is large. What can we say? A lot of people coming out bearishly. And a lot of lot of people closing out their shorts, liquidated. Uh, sorry, closing out of their long positions. Other people getting liquidated. Uh, you know, just a whole lot of people getting really, um, you know, you know, beaten up. Let's say this morning and last night. And what can we say? Twenty percent move to the downside in a day. That is really, really, really big move. And you might think, what is some of the causes behind this? Of course, there's always the technical reason. We were in a sideways range for a good two weeks. When you break the low of the range you do expect follow through. So we can acknowledge there's technical reasons behind this. Of course, whenever you, if we had broke to the higher range, I think we would have seen all time high. If we broke to the, the lower the range, you know, we've come back and we've retested those lows at around $46,000. So of course I can acknowledge there's a technical reason behind this, but I'm not gonna deny the fact that this was highly, you know, influenced by Elon Musk. And what I can only describe honestly as a very evil and vindictive tweet with, you know, he clearly has an ulterior motive, in my opinion. Obviously, coming out last night with his tweet causing this move to the downside, where he has decided Tesla no, what, no longer wish to accept Bitcoin for, you know, as a payment method for their cars. And given a quite barbaric reason, in my opinion, of saying that it's because of Bitcoin transactions, um, you know, using too much fossil fuels, I suppose, and just not a, not a sustainable way. And I mean, I could rant on about this for a good half an hour. I'm not going to. I want to bring it back to the technical analysis and the next trade, but I must, you know, it weighs on my mind. I'd like to talk about this for just a minute or two, really, because it just blows my mind. Are, are we truly supposed to believe that the richest man in the world here with thousands of thousands of people working for him, a whole team dedicated to these type of decisions, have thought to themselves, yeah, we'll accept Bitcoin. They have clearly, obviously, they will have done their due diligence on this. They knew what they were accepting. So we are supposed to believe then, I suppose, that they accept Bitcoin and two weeks later have said, oh, we're no longer accepting Bitcoin because of the, um, you know, the energy use of Bitcoin. Like, do they really think that we're stupid? Like, that's, that's just... There's no way that they only found out about this two weeks after accepting Bitcoin. It's just it's just crazy that they think that we're this stupid. And I really got annoyed by it. I, I really did last night. I just thought, what? I I trade Tesla stocks, yeah. So I I, I trade Tesla. And I've seen I've seen Elon do this before on Tesla stocks. So I have actually been trading it. And he done the tweet to crash his own Tesla stock. Why? Because he wanted to, you know, he wanted to buy some more Tesla stock and, and pump the prices of his own stock. But here we go. I digress from this. In my opinion, when he done that, it was a mistake. And I think when we say everybody makes mistakes. So I still uh, liked Elon after this. I, I love his work ethic. I think he's, you know, I, I thought he was a really, really, you yeah, know, I respected him, I suppose, in that regards, just from his work he's done. I think it's really good, especially Starlink. But anyway, moving on here. One time's a mistake, and he done he done it before with Tesla stock, crashing his stock. Obviously, that wrecked millions of people. But to do it a second time, that is when it goes from a mistake to a bad habit. And this is an awful habit and a very evil thing to do. I truly believe this. Speaking from the heart, this is a very evil tweet. Because why, why has he done this? Well, in my opinion, it is because he has an ulterior motive. 
where he wants to, in my opinion, either create his own cryptocurrency. I think maybe it's likely that you see like a Tesla coin or something like this. And if that is the case, I will tell you right now, I will be more than happy to do the best I possibly can to short that one into the ground. But anyway, I think he has his own motives here. Why is he? Why has he done this? You know, vindictive, horrible tweet to literally crash the price of Bitcoin. Of course, he knew it was going to crash the price of Bitcoin. Why has he done this? One of three reasons, in my opinion. Reason number one, like he done with his Tesla stock, uh, he wants to crash the price of Bitcoin to buy more lower and rise the price. You know, he done that once on Tesla, and again, I thought this was, you know, not really right, but he done it. A mistake was made, but this second time he's done it on Bitcoin, it's just it's just unacceptable. Why? Why, if this is the case, he wants to buy more lower? Why does he need to wreck millions of people? We have to remember, millions of people have got liquidated on this move to the downside. The guy's a billionaire. Why is why does he have to be so selfish? It just really, really actually annoyed me. Um, and so that's reason number one he wants to buy Bitcoin. Lower. Reason number two, he's doing this to um, you know talk down on Bitcoin to try and pump the price of of um, of, of Dogecoin, I suppose. Uh, or, or yeah, option number three, literally, he just wants to create his own cryptocurrency. But whatever his reasons, I feel the whole thing is just an absolute scandal. Again, this is just my opinion. Um, I'm not talking about facts, of course. We're just talking about my opinion here. And I just truly feel that this was the an awful, really an awful thing to do because he clearly knew what he was doing with this. And it's just it's just the reasons behind it, accepting it, accepting Bitcoin two weeks later saying we're not accepting Bitcoin anymore because of the, um, you know, the energy uses. It's like they knew this before they accepted Bitcoin. So it's just the whole thing is just is is truly um yeah, it really got to me. <laughs> and as you know, from from this, after the series of tweets and trades that I was sharing last night was we decided to do our bit, you know, as, as much as we could, because this guy has went from a hero in many people's eyes, including myself, to a villain off of off of, off of this, this thing for this tweet. So we decided, I decided myself, not just as a cryptocurrency well, but actually just as a human being, how can we let this go? And as we were saying, like with this quote, really, if you fight, you might lose. But if you do not fight, you have already lost. So what we have to think is, is again, it's, it's amount of Bitcoin holdings aside here. We're just talking about we if we do not try and defend against this, he's going to continuously do it again and again and again. And yes, we can say he maybe has succeeded with his with his wants here. He has crashed the price of Bitcoin and it continues to drop as we are speaking. But if we just roll over and do nothing, then we are doing nothing. And so I decided to put as much money as I had on the line to actually try and defend this. As we were saying here, if Bitcoin rolls over, at least we went down fighting. I truly believe Elon is evil with his Bitcoin tweet and has his other motives. In, honestly, in a moral and selfish tweet, I will be happy in myself to at least try to defend against this selling onslaught by longing Bitcoin. Obviously, I love the memes that people put out. They were absolutely, they, they, you know, these, these kept me going last night. We were trading up this till like 3 a.m. Very late night, but it was a fun night overall. But you know, it really was, <laughs> felt like a, an onslaught. But what we have to remember is the, t the technical battle, you know, bringing this back to the technicals here, <laughs> ranted on there for eight minutes. Wow, that's ridiculous. I'm sorry about that. I just feel a bit passionate about this subject. But anyway, we have technical levels. And I recognize last night, we have three potential long trades where we're talking about three battles within the overall war. And so if we zoom out here onto the four hour chart, I recognized while Price was dumping down off of his tweet, where obviously we're bouncing at around 52K at a time, we had three levels where I'd be looking to long this. Number one, the CC. Number two, the point of control. And number three, the swing failure pattern. Those were the battles that I was willing to participate in to try and, you know, fight against Elon and, and what, he, what he was trying to do here, which I truly believed was, was evil. Obviously, what we can see, you know, in clearly now, the CC was not held as support. We lost the CC, lost the point of control, but we come to the swing failure pattern of the low. So the swing failure pattern of the low, obviously at the end, bottoming out there right basically on, give or take, you know, give or take 
you know, from $46,000 to the absolute low of the move, give or take 0.2%. We basically bottomed out there at $46,000 last night for, you know, you have to remember an incredible bounce to the upside, about 12%. And I'll go over the resistance that we bounced off of right now. Uh, well, you know, towards, uh, you know, a few minutes time, it's quite a nice resistance. But basically, we have to recognize our battles. Why do we have to recognize our battles? Because, well, at the end of the day, kind of like this picture, the, the meme actually was pretty funny because we're trading against the richest man in the world. He clearly wants to lower the price of Bitcoin. So, you, you know, you cannot just be longing in every single place. You have to do this strategically and you have to think to yourself, where where can I fight against this with also doing a, you know, a sensible trade as possible? Obviously, we have to acknowledge this is a highly risky trade. Of course it is. But nevertheless, in my opinion, I was more than happy to risk the money on it. And the CC was not held. The point of control was not held, but the swing failure pattern was held. And obviously, well, I think we can say that this, you know, I've said this before, like swing failure patterns are some of the easiest trades you can see. Obviously, we're bouncing off this around right now. So I can cover the next levels of support and resistance. But I'd just like to bring your attention the real fact that I was calling for this swing failure pattern of $46,000. And literally saying, if that doesn't hold, I am going to get wrecked on this trade. <laughs> but for me, you know, I knew where I wanted to buy. That's the main thing that we're taking away here. I knew where I wanted to buy. And I knew that last level, that last battle would be for a swing failure pattern of $46,000. Obviously, people were asking me prior to this, this was still at around, you know, we didn't put that low in until daily open, uh, literally one hour later. But we recognize the bounces of $51,000. They're very weak. How could we recognize this from a technical reason? If we look here, I was asked about the open interest. I'm saying, yeah, the open interest is weak. You can see the bounce bouncing from 51,000 to around 52, 53,000. Bounce is very weak on declining open interest. We had to think to ourselves, this is a bounce off the CC, but of course the bounce is a weak bounce off the CC. It's not really what we want to see. We have to imagine that it's likely that we're going to be losing this level. And of course we did lose it in the end, okay? It was an amazing bounce. Battle was lost and we moved down lower, okay? And this is where myself, I recognize now, okay, we've lost the CC. I have two battles left to try and trade. That's, just, that's the point of control of the prior range and the swing failure pattern of the low. But remembering this, which I just I truly have to say thank you to this guy because it was a funny, but it's, it's really true. I recognized, even as a Bitcoin well, there's, there's, I need some more reinforcements. There's no way I can do this with what I just have on my exchange. Obviously, you may or may not know we have recently moved Oh, I myself, I just picked personally, but moved some of my net worth to Bitcoin, holding an offline storage just because I'm, I'm pretty bullish on the asset. But I needed the reinforcements. So this is where the battle took its next stage. I sent all of my offline Bitcoin, and this was pretty crazy when I think about it, but I think I had the, I had the <laughs> emotions too high, let's be honest. Um, but I decided to send all of my Bitcoin that I had offline into four separate accounts, uh, basically to, to do my best, do my bit, to basically just try my very much hardest to defend this, risking, if I think about it now, sensibly the next morning, really kind of <laughs> was a bad trading decision in the, you know, it was a kind of a, 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 an emotional response. But yeah, that was that was my thought process. We have this last level of defense. It is the swing failure pattern. We've lost everything else, but I cannot do this without, you know, getting the reinforcements, calling in the cavalry. And that for me was just getting in all my offline Bitcoin ready to leverage long it. Bit crazy, but hey, <laughs> that, that that all that Bitcoin arrived at the daily close, which was obviously 1 a.m. And that's where we were saying it's arrived. It's now or never. What are we referring to here? We're obviously referring to the swing failure pattern. Elon, yes, we lost the battle of the CC. The point of control was just no trade. We we, we literally, I'll show you this on the like the three minute chart. The point of control. Okay, we literally, this was the CC bounce, the point of control. We just went straight through it. There was, there was no battle. There was no trade at the swing, at the point of control. The only one was this, was the swing failure pattern. And well, the swing failure pattern actually went, went really well, really well. So obviously we had that Bitcoin, or for myself, that Bitcoin had personally arrived. We knew what we wanted. We knew we had the swing failure pattern. We had lost the prior battle of the CC and the point of control, but we had not yet lost the war. And that is because sometimes you have to lose the battle in order to win the war. The war was fought for the swing failure pattern. And this was brilliant. 
we have to win. We had the cavalry, not only with my offline Bitcoin coming to the exchange to leverage long that, but we also saw a lot of a lot of determined people to fight for that swing failure pattern. Obviously, we're talking now for that swing failure pattern again called by myself, knew where we wanted to see it at $46,000. We hit $46,000. And I must stress, we only spent literally a minute, a minute at $46,000. You see this? That was the wick down. You spend a minute, bam, you're back above $46,000. That was that was, that was beautiful. And as soon as we see this, my, well, myself anyway, I'm not speaking for anyone else. And of course, no financial advice in this video. But myself, I was going market by market by market by market by market by market by. This was the level to defend. And I knew myself personally that I was going to get wrecked if we lost it. <laughs> I needed to defend it with all I had. And defend it, we absolutely did. This was the battle for the swing failure pattern. This time we had a lovely bounce, as you can see. This was a post in the group as it was happening at around 47,000. We we saw the initial. This is a 10 million volume chart. So I know not everyone's used to these type of charts. But this is a 10 million volume chart. Look at the speed of the volume coming in here. This is to over a matter of minutes, but the volume is coming in very much so off of 46,000. We're getting bouncing to 47,000. We're seeing the support come in. We're seeing the open interest in you know increase this time. Instead of seeing the weak bounce, which we had saw earlier in the day with the open interest going down, this time we had seen the open interest increasing. We had seen the bounce underway. We had swing failure pattern $46,000. And ladies and gentlemen, the rest really is history, as we all know from going in very much so big for a swing failure pattern, risking, if I think about it, too many zeros. But nevertheless, we fought the battle and I truly believe that we won that battle getting the move from $46,000 all the way up to the reverse of that CC. So let me show you now where the resistance is. We take our fib from that low to the high. Well, look at this. It really was, you couldn't have made it up. It was fairy tale stuff. We get our move from the swing failure pattern to test the backside of that CC. So everybody that had prior defended the low of the CC of us, we got the retest. I know some soldiers wanted to get out break even. So we got them out break even. Never leave a man behind. Of course, this is going to be people getting out break even. You know, it's going to be getting a bit of sell pressure. It's the reverse of the CC. And we're talking about two, oh, basically the exact dollar, like very, very, very precise here. Back, back test the bottom of the CC there to the absolute dollar. And of course, we got a bit of a retracement off of this. We got people profit taking off of the back test or not profit taking. You got some people profit taking if they decided to long the low of the uh, swing failure pattern, obviously myself did, getting in those average price. Remember, this is lots of market orders, getting an average of around 46,400. Oh, in the end, we're obviously taking this up to 50, 50, $51,000. An insane trade really was. But what we have to remember is, why did we reject then the backside of the CC? Well, people taking profits off of a long, people that were long here getting out break even, and other people thinking to themselves, okay, this is a good short position. You know, it's as simple as that. So you've got three reasons why the selling pressures come back in this morning. Um, but yeah, that one, that one was, that one really, really was good. Uh, we fought valiantly doing our best to support price to help with a swing fire pattern. I took my biggest ever Bitcoin long, a collective effort. And I thank my CC Paul Amigos. <laughs> uh, one, honestly, though, one of my favorite trades of all time. And this is one that I will remember for the rest of my life. Uh, what we've what we done yesterday was I, I just... I just thought it was absolutely brilliant, if I'm totally honest. With you. I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed myself. And uh, that's that's the main thing, though. But the, the, the thing that we just have to remember, and, and I hope people just don't forget this, because I think we live in an age where people forget things within a week, um, be that good or for, for the worst. But I don't really think that you, you we should forget about this. I think it, I just truly want to remind you what Elon done here, in my opinion, was just evil, unacceptable. This is not the first time he's done it. He has his motives. Of course, we have to accept he's doing it for his own gains, capitalism and all this. But at the end of the day, the, the, the way he's done it here to crash the cryptocurrency market, knowing he is going to wreck millions of people, and many of those people, his fans, um, I just feel is, is selfish, evil, and just not something we should forget. 
uh, whether if, if he releases a statement in two weeks or whatever it might be to say we're coming back and, we're, and, and Tesla's accepting Bitcoin, I hope people do out of, you know, I hope people, even in the first place, I think you're crazy to buy Bitcoin with a Tesla. You're, you're trading the best performing asset over the past 10 years for a depreciating asset as a car. I mean, that in itself is stupid. I think he probably done this because they recognize no one, nobody would buy a, Bit, a Tesla with Bitcoin because it's a barbaric thing to do because you're literally, why, why? Would you tr why would you trade the best performing asset of the past ten years for 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 a car which is instantly going to lose half its value when you take it off the forecourt, yeah? But anyway, at the end of the day, whatever he's done this for, he is an evil man. I hope people do not forget this. We've done our very best to defend against Elon. If I'm totally honest, we went in hard for the swing failure patterns. We taught, we picked three battles. I have to say, we lost one battle. As I will end here, we I done a little bit of a review for my. This is inside of the champions group last night. I hope you can see this. Quick review of my trades before I go to sleep. <laughs> Ended up staying a bit up a bit longer, but this was at two a.m. last night. But you have to be dedicated to the cause. Quick review of my trade before I sleep. I longed the CC. Of course, it ended in a losing trade of one point five percent. Okay, never mind. We went through the CC. Okay, we was obviously looking then for the point of control, but there was there was zero support. There was not even a bounce. And of course, that was obviously not worth longing. So we had lost the CC battle. Fair enough. Our last battle, let's remind you, we, we knew this literally was the last potential trade on the Bitcoin chart. Sometimes, you know, like we're saying here, swing foe pattern is the last hope. <laughs> I love all my uh, little quotes back to Star Wars, but this really was the last hope, okay? It was the only trade we had left before not only myself would have got, remember this one, not only myself would have got wrecked, then they were out posters. But I would have, basically, I would have lost quite a lot of money if we had lost $46,000. So I knew, I knew that was our last hope on the chart. And so we had to defend this. We defended, we got a 12% bounce to the upside. All well and good. I'm very actually content with this. But obviously... We lost the CC, didn't take the point of control, took the swing failure pattern, but this is the thing in trading. Long the swing failure pattern for a great bounce, obviously 12% in the end. I knew $46,000 had to be defended hard and it only spent a few seconds there. Overall happy and shows why we need a plan of where we will long before it gets there. So you are ready and not scared. Remember, I'm bringing this back to the technical analysis here quickly. I knew in advance while we were still trading at $54,000, the three levels I wanted to get interested in. The CC, which was lost, got out for a 1.5% loss. You know, it doesn't matter. It's a, it's a, it's a ongoing battle. We had the point of control. There was no trade. There was no support. There was no bounce. It was really, really weak. Our last and only trade left was the swing failure pattern of $46,000. And you, what you have to remember here is I'm not saying swing failure pattern of 47, not saying swing failure pattern to 45. I'm saying swing failure pattern $46,000. They were at my exact words and the exact level given. Again, this is within the champions group. Okay, the, the higher tier champions group. But what I'm stressing here is we knew that level. We hit $46,000. And this is the time to go in. 12% bounce to the upside. Now we get our support resistance flip off of the CC. And I truly believe that we overall, the war maybe is still ongoing. But the thing that you have to take away here is pick your battles wisely in trading. Get into reinforcements. <laughs> that was funny when I think about it. I can't really believe I've done that. But yeah, get the get got the reinforcements. We come together and we defended for a swing failure pattern. And I hope at the very least we are able to, um, you know, and I'm, I'm not trying to say this is a, our own, you know, it's not like I'm trying to say we caused all of this. Of course, we didn't. I'm not trying to say that in the slightest. But what I'm trying to say is, um, going back to this, if if we do not come together and fight, then we have already lost. So I'm not trying to say this was myself. I'm not trying to say this was CC Paul. But what I am trying to say is we knew the levels to trade. We traded the $46,000 swing failure pattern. We got a massive move to the upside of 12%. We've retested that CC as resistance. Fair enough. We've come back off of it. That's to absolutely to be expected. I would have been more surprised if we just went straight through it. Now I'll end. Where's the resistance? Well, clearly that CC flipped support resistance. So he's got that resistance out. Let's just say $52,000. Yeah, $52,000. Where's support? Well, I think support is slightly changed now. We could bring this up. We, we don't really want to see now back again 
$47,000 lost. If we lose $47,000, we're going to come back down and challenge the low. And if we lose this low, I mean, no longer will I get wrecked because I've already turned, I've done my trades. I've done my trades. Last night was when I was emotional <laughs> trading way, <laughs> way too much money. But, um, you know, it happens and we, we got a lovely bounce. I actually made quite a lot of money in the end. So anyway, it doesn't matter about me. What we can say, though, is if we lose this low, I, I think we're going to be coming back down, likely to be, you know, probably going to be testing back at around that $42,000 at least. So I think we can take it step to step. I will do a video dedicated to the next technical analysis. Um, yeah, maybe maybe I'll do a live stream for the public and we'll go through the next levels of Bitcoin. I want to keep this one short and sweet just to, I want to have this video online so I can remember this and speak it back to my children in 10 years of the of the day. CC Paul Fort Tesla. Uh, did we win? Well, I think we've done a valiant effort. Uh, overall, made a lot of money. So I think that class is a win. Unfortunately, we have obviously rejected the bottom of the CC here. Yeah, that's fair enough. Uh, from here, if we see lower, I'm going to be looking overall 47 next. If we lose that probably towards $42,000 and the resistance is $52,000. I will bring you a live stream, everybody. I want to do a live stream to talk you through more in depth here, the Bitcoin chart. This video really was for, yeah, I want to, re I want to remember the day that we fought this. And I'm, I will show my kids this video, I'm sure. And uh, overall, yeah, the thing you have to remember is in a battle, in a war, you can lose some of the battles in the overall concept of the war. Taking a little scrape of 1.5% of losing to CC, it's not the end of the world, but we take a loss, but we end with a win of 10%. So that's the thing. You lose the battle, but you win the war. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you've enjoyed this video. And never forget, if you do not fight, then you've already lost. Stand up for what you believe in. Hope you've enjoyed. And thank you ever so much, ladies and gentlemen. I will catch you in the next video. Have a good day.